what's going on everybody welcome to another episode of what are we missing uh we got a real cool guest here with us um josh's old co-worker actually uh, so this dude does a a lot in uh the community of wyoming the community of grand rapids um running uh b3 um the aau program also a assistant coach at uh wyoming high school um so welcome bernard barnesdale how you doing man good man appreciate you guys having me on appreciate it yeah time. man yes sir and... yeah yeah we're, we're excited to have you on and um you know your, your knowledge of the game and um you touch so many lives out there so um yeah we're really For excited real. to to yeah to learn your story and um hopefully it blesses some some people out there definitely, so, definitely. yeah yeah without further ado let's uh let's jump into these uh these icebreaker questions bro yeah All right. no problem i'm gonna hit you up with the first one nba or college college Ooh. college Yep. Why so? Uh, the effort for the full amount of the game. Uh, you know, they, they get after it from the jump. It's no James Harden's out there. Man. No, yeah, no, there's, <laughs> there's none of that. And, and, I, and honestly, I think some of it has to do, I think the skill might be a little more of a factor because, you know, you have less of the athlete out there, so you get a little more of that skill. But I like the effort from the jump. Yeah. Although the NBA players are the greatest athletes in the world. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> no that's not even a ain't even a question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me and Josh are, are both NBA guys. Yeah. We, we're unapologetic about that. But, for real, for real, yeah. man. They make it. I'm easier. getting into it more though. The, yeah. the, the more I watch the younger cats come through, the more I, I, I'm enjoying it more and more. Yeah, no doubt, no Just doubt. A... Um, yeah, it takes me like a connection. So like. Kobe Bufkin, like I'll watch a Michigan game because, you know, we watched him growing up um, or Marcus Bingham, MSU. Um, or like if it's somewhere like a Zion really like got me into college like <laughs> that, that like, year. I like, must be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to, had to watch Zion. So, um, yeah, it has to be a connection for me, for me to get into it. And of course, March Madness too. So, um. All right, so who is your all-time favorite NBA player, just like oh, ever? Without a doubt, the man MJ. 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 Okay. I grew up a Piston fan, but uh, for some reason, we got a lot of the Chicago channels, and we got to watch. I got to watch MJ every night, like WGN, man. when I was younger. Man. So what? Just man, just something different. Something yeah. different. No doubt. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't even remember him and. 96 through 98, really only oh, 90, 97, 98, but. I would probably say year two or three is when, you know, you really start. I grew up in the country, so there was no cable. So then once <laughs> we were able to pick that up, year two or three, man, it was anytime I could watch MJ play, it was something different. Yeah. Shoot. So I'm lucky in that part. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next one, Katie or Giannis? I saw you added that one, bro. Oh, man. That Chris Crispy Sorry sparked this one. I got to go. I got to go with KD. Got to go with KD. Okay. Giannis okay. is a bad man, though. <laughs> He's yeah. a bad man, but uh, I got to run with KD still. What's okay. what, what, what reason? I, I don't know. I guess it's probably more of an old school piston thing. Not liking mm -hmm. the Bucks, not liking those school, <laughs> like those teams, you know, That's probably what it boils down to. Um, yeah, and then KD, I like, you know, I like that that scoring piece of it. Yeah, um, with, with the jumper and three different levels. Although right. Giannis is getting there now. Yeah, it's starting it to be respectable, man. It really, oh, is. Yeah. It really yeah. is. So, who, do you do you think KD's the best in the world right now? Who do you think is? Man, that's tough because LeBron is LeBron. Um, yeah. He's been hot lately, too. Yeah, the game Steph that he's is, been playing. Oh, yeah. And Steph is doing his thing right now. Yeah. Um, that would, I think, the way I look at it, who, who do you go to last possession? I still pick KD over LeBron. Now, okay. I might take LeBron over the game, game seven, yeah. but I think that yeah. 20 seconds on the clock when that's that poster moment, mm -hmm. I, I, I got to take KD still, I think. All right. Well, you see who's behind me, so you know who I'm taking. 
<laughs> man, there's one thing about LeBron fans. Y'all are true to the end hey, of time. Them mugs yeah, loyal. Man. Loyal. LeBron Stan, bro. <laughs> LeBron Stan. I'm rocking him till, till the wheels fall off. So um, last one is uh, your favorite shoe to hoop in. Oh, man, it's been so long. Uh, <laughs> man, I don't even know if they make them. I probably had, there was a shoe I had in high school. It was some, it was a Nike shoe. It was uh, like a, like one of the original vapor type something. It was just really, really light. Um, yeah. Man, I'm so old. Shoe, shoe game. Like, I'm so old, used to hoop in Jordans. And yeah. now you're not even, even playing the Jordan. <laughs> oh um, so um, that's probably, it was a Nike shoe. I can't even remember the name of it. It was super, super light shoe. It was probably similar to the Kobe's. You know? Okay. I would bet if I was still able to move, it'd be the Kobe's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a what's pair of. Still, still able to move. Yeah. yeah. I can shoot, but I yeah. <laughs> there's not much movement going on. Where? Uh... So, yeah, we got um, Bernard Barnsdale with us, um, assistant coach with Wyoming. Um, I want to say Wyoming Park. That's what it was when I was when I was in high school back in the day. But Wyoming High School. Um, make sure you guys subscribe to our page on YouTube, um, like this video. But let's get into your story, man. Uh, so the first question we got for you is, um, so basically, where are you from? Give us a little background. Um, I'm from uh Got you. I'm from a small town, just uh, about 15 minutes west of Kalamazoo, called Pawpaw, Michigan. Okay. Um, born and raised there, um, but since once I graduated from high school, I came up here to Aquinas College uh, to play some sports, play basketball and baseball here, and been in the Grand Rapids area ever since, for the oh. most part. Um, you know, background basketball was, you know, my dad tries to say, you know, I knew you was in love with it when you went to bed with it. You had it in your arms. Like, you know, you go lay down and that basketball sitting there after shooting the shot. So yeah, for yeah. me, uh, for as long as I can remember, basketball has kind of been the, the tool, motivation thing that I've used, you know. Um, so then I got up here and I played two sports at Aquinas College. Uh, best experience, some of the best experiences, best people in my lifetime and um, and kind of just kind of fell into it. You know, um, really wasn't thinking about being a coach or anything like that. And yeah. the next thing you know, uh, Coach Elbro asked me to stay on after I graduated and coach. And mm -hmm. that almost became as a as a more of a driving force than playing back then. I really, yeah. really enjoyed that. So just stuck with basketball. It's given so much for me that I feel that it's an obligation to keep giving back. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, Rick Elbro. Oh yeah, no, no okay. coach. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Play for Man. play. I played wow. for Rick. Okay. Four that's years and coach with him for four. Yeah, that's nice. That's what's up. Yeah, I remember him. He was he was at Granville for a year. That was yep. random. Uh, when I was in high school, but yep. yeah, I feel like he's been all over the place. Yeah, he's been in a lot of spots. He's been yeah. Well, it was Aquinas, East Grand Rapids, I think, then Aquinas uh -huh. forever, and then wasn't he at Davenport? Uh, yeah, he left us. Went to Cleveland State. Coach okay. with uh, Mike Garland down there. Um, and yeah. then I think he came back to Michigan State Girls. I think that's how. No, I think yeah. he came back to Granville. Yeah. I think he came back to Granville. Then he went to Michigan mm -hmm. State Girls. Mm -hmm. Then he was at U of D Girls, I believe. And then he went, ended up at last job was at Downport Girls. Yeah. Man, journeyman. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. I mean, that's a uh, coach is a, the epitome of passion for the game. Yeah. I mean, just no so care. much passion for the game. <laughs> Yeah. No doubt about it. So you uh you mentioned your dad. Um, you know, I don't know if this is the answer to the question. I just know that you, you know, the love you got for your dad, but who was uh your biggest influence on the court, off the court? Probably my, my, my dad was a big, big, uh, big influence um just with all the all the learning lessons. Um grandma as well, my dad's my dad's mom. Um she was one that it just, whenever she was there or able to make it around, it was seemed to always be like one of my best nights. Um, mm -hmm. A grandma's boy, <laughs> you could say that. Mm -hmm. uh, a grandma's boy and, and a daddy's boy for the most part. But those two uh, were very, very big influences. And then, like, you know, all the coaches that you have over time, each one of them give you a little bit of something. Um, so yeah. those are probably some of the big influences. No doubt. So, um, so you mentioned you played baseball and basketball. Yeah. Um, so what position did you play in baseball? And then two-part question, how how was it being a 
dual athlete in college? Um, so I played a little bit everywhere. Kind of, I played outfield when I was younger, um, and then my senior year, I, I played second base um, at Aquinas, and then um, fun. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, it just because you, when you're an athletic person and you go to college and you're still playing sports year round, you're still doing the traveling experiences. I mean, it was tough because you got to, you know, you probably take away from one to focus on the other, but um, it, it was fun. It was a good experience and meeting a lot of people, meet a lot of great people, um, a lot of trips, places I would have never been in this world. Um, I would have never traveled to Alaska. I, Texas, LA, I would have never been to some of those spots um, before, um, you know, college and got to Aquinas College and they provided a lot of great experiences. Yeah. No, that's super cool. I feel like playing one sport is hard enough, man. But For real. That's... <laughs> well, it helps a little bit because, you know, oh, if you have yeah. a baseball game oh. or a basketball conditioning, you're good, you know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so you go play baseball and then the boys are running wind sprints. Uh. That's a crazy yeah, combo, so, too. Oh, I got baseball. I got to go hit. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hitting off the tee. <laughs> that's funny, man. That's a, yeah. uh, that's a, that's a crazy combo, too, though, because uh, usually you hear football, baseball. I don't think I I don't think I know anybody that did basketball, baseball. Yeah, yeah there's uh, actually the only very few people. One of the few people I met, my wife, actually was a basketball softball player. At Aquinas, mm. so okay. um, there's that. But for the most part, you don't see a lot of that. It's usually fall, spring, or and yeah. basketball. You usually don't do multiple of them. But nah, honestly, man. I couldn't give either one of them up at that point in time. It's mm -hmm. just like I want to keep playing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, Aquinas was gracious enough to give me that opportunity. Like I said, two great coaches. Coach Boshan is a legend, mm -hmm. um, and then Coach Albro, giving the opportunity. Man, I, I thank them tons for that. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about um, how it was when you was growing up, like hooping. Um, you know, you're from the Kazoo area, but I'm sure you got down to GR, played a little bit. But, yeah, just tell us how, how it was back then. Man, I grew up – I'm, I'm going to tell you funny. I mean, you, Josh, you might not know this. I grew up on a dirt road. <laughs> I did not way know. Way out <laughs> in the country in Pawpaw, <laughs> Michigan, man. And we had probably about a 15 by 15 slab of cement with a hoop. My dad and uncles started playing out there two-on-two -on, -two on the Saturdays, and that's kind of what generated um, the love, the first love for it. Um, and then when we got to high school, you know, um, playing, you know, some YMCA ball, stuff like that, we didn't have a lot there because, you know, travel ball wasn't a big thing. Um, so then in high school, there was a court, man. I, I owe a lot to this court. There was a court right outside our middle school. Legendary. Um, like if we, I wish I would have recorded some things and some games because we started um, playing two on two, three on three. Next thing you know, it got to the it could only fit four in the court. Literally all the varsity teams, people from the area just would drive and stop down there. And next thing you know, it's Pawpaw versus Madawan. And, you know, that's our cross time rival. So that court, man, there was some games. Um, mm. We'd get there at four and we played till nine o'clock at night, probably four or five days a week. Dang, um, wow. So that was where a lot was done. Um, so this is how far travel balls come. When I was growing up, there was pretty much one organization in the area, it was the KZU Blues. Um, after that, it was a couple small pop-ups for teams, but that's that's how much travel balls grow. Yeah. Teams all over the place now. So um, those were kind of the experiences, you know, the early experiences. I mean, that court, you could have put a documentary on that. I mean, it was – we had people coming, you know, we had people, the graduates that come back from Pawpaw, people from Kalamazoo show up, you know, just random. So there was some, some good times down there. Man, bro, four to nine. That's grind. That's grind. I, I love, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that, man. I do. Um, so that's a good segue into, like, from when you were coming up and then what you see now. What do you feel like is the biggest difference um, between the two? Um, from your generation to the generation today? A couple things. The park. You got to be a man at the park. <laughs> yeah. there, there's moments when you get challenged. Um, so that that's a big thing. But it was, I mean, for lack, I mean, not that it's unsafe, but it was just more of the environment back then as you go to the park. Now, you, you know, you get in the gyms. Um, 
so that was that was a big thing. Uh, the difference, though, the skill level that some of these kids come through with nowadays is like it's through the roof. Um, you know, back in the day, if you could use both hands, you were a pretty good ball player, and it's just you know an underhand finish or an overhand finish or things like now. Now these kids are you know fourth, fifth graders in out both hands crossing over euros. I mean, just the the skill level that these kids have at such early ages. It's, it's amazing, to be honest with you. I mean, some of these kids are highly talented. Uh, and, you know, the shooting, you know, that's one thing. You know, growing up in a small, like in that cement slab, I could shoot because that's all we could do. We couldn't do anything but shoot out there. But um, it, it's just the skill level. These kids have got a big, big jump on us older people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was that's crazy. To... Oh, go ahead, bro. I was just saying, I was listening to uh... – someone talk about the skill level of the younger generation. I was listening to one today, actually, and they were saying the skill level was there, but the thing that they're missing, though, is, like, that five-on-five, five, like, how you said, like, the outside of the park. Like, it's, like, a lot of stuff is, like, individualized, so the skills is, like, through the roof, but then when you get them, like, five-on-five, five, it's, like, uh. Yeah, it's just the understanding of, you know, Unfortunately, a lot of times you got to use the cones to develop the skills. Well, in a game, it's not a cone. That's a human trying to guard you. So um, at the park, you get to pick up on that. You get to pick up going in, you know, when you're younger and you're going against a grown man, that's a, that's a different story. You better yeah. figure it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, but these kids, man, are so talented in terms of the dribbling is the, the big one. You know, the ball handling skills is there's something different man. these kids can combo some stuff together that you just oh that's a pretty nice combo still got to beat your man though <laughs> right yeah, yeah no doubt how often do you see that how often do you see um a kid that looks like a superstar in a workout um doing drills and stuff like that and you get him in a five on five you know uh realm and they just look totally different you see it a little more than you'd like to honestly See a little more, and, and you, you see it in their turnovers a lot of times. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times a kid will dribble himself into a, uh, not necessarily a trap situation, but a help situation just because the move was designed to be an out crossover. Um, or sometimes that move might be the crossover, but be able to pro out to the next position or Euro mm-hmm. to that. So you see it a lot more than you'd like to. Um, but again, these kids are so skilled, you're getting yourself into a position that I wouldn't have been able to get into, you know, back in the day. So, um, but no, a little more than you like, a little more, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. A lot of what I see today is like, kind of like what you said. Just, um, you can almost know what they're going to do before they do it, um, and it's not like instinct. Mm-hmm. So, and when we used to play, it was like, all right, I'm just going to react to what he does to me but a lot of kids today are just like i'm just going to do in and out crossover yeah it's like a lot of times it doesn't, it's not going to work so that Here's five, five you, really yeah. helps you yeah give you gives, gives you that instinct for sure big time you really see it on the euro steps mm-hmm. yeah. a lot of times the kid would just euro <laughs> yeah. into the like we're, you didn't need the euro right there you know, the, you know that's how the finishing move was that's where you really see it at but yeah. <laughs> yeah that was not even a thing so I, you would have said, you say Euro step to anybody my age, and then they'll look at you like you're crazy. Man. Bro, <laughs> Josh, I don't know if you remember. I'm not sure. If uh, you I remember. I already know what you're going to say. Man, so we had a coach, uh, Coach McGee um, at Grand Valley, um, Terrence McGee. I believe he's at. I don't know where he's at now. Missouri he might be back home in Milwaukee, though. A Milwaukee? Um, Something. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, he was teaching us how to Euro step. So none of us were getting it bro like we were traveling <laughs> tripping over our feet um this was in 2000 what 10 like this is when you yeah. step like Ginobili starts doing it and then oh, yeah. james harden a little bit um only one cat on our team shout out to rob he he Man. was smooth with it bro but Wood. i didn't know <laughs> i really couldn't euro until like 2014 like i finally <laughs> i finally got it and the first time I did it, bro, in a game, actual game, it was a Wiley game, so it wasn't really nothing like that. I tried to finger roll it, bro. I, I surprised myself, and I airballed the, <laughs> the finger roll, dog. So, 
I have oh, a yeah, hard man. time walking through it. Like the walk, I like if you do doing the steps, it's just just not yeah. natural. Not yeah, natural. no doubt. It's no crazy. Doubt. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that day. Yeah, man. Did you get um, it, Josh? Nah. Nah, I wasn't. <laughs> I, I, I ain't have that in my package. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, back to you. You know, like so we're talking about 2010 and some of the things that we wish we would have worked on. You know, like Euro steps. But like, what is some of the stuff, like some regrets or whatever that you have from when you was pooping that you wish you would have done better that you want like the younger generation to like to know and grab so, so that they don't make that same mistake. You oh, know what I mean? definitely. A couple things. One, we didn't have the travel ball. So, you know, I really wish I could have played some, like some more travel ball stuff type. It was just wasn't, as, it wasn't available as much. Mm -hmm. um, so I played a lot of baseball. So that, that, you know, I don't regret playing any baseball, but in terms of basketball, being able to do that, that would have probably been something. Um, and honestly, um, the body, the kids nowadays, they, they take care of their bodies. They're, there's the strength training, there's that stuff. I wish that would have been a, probably a little bit of a focus a little more because I really didn't lift weights or doing that until, you know, you get to college. And at that time, Aquinas' weight room was above, was like in a balcony. It was, wasn't, wasn't much at all. Mm -hmm. um, so that would have probably been the one change is to see, like, if your body was in complete tip. I mean, I was a hoop and shape. I played from four to nine, but that extra step, you know, uh, that would have been something that I wish I could have changed and, and done a little different um, just because, you know, that changes your explosion. That changes the finishing at the mm -hmm. rim. That fin changes finishing through contact. So um, those would probably be the two two biggest things. Yeah, especially, I mean, speaking for myself, I don't know about you, Tran, but coming from high school and then playing in college, I mean, I really didn't even lift weights and in high school and then when I got to college all of a sudden it's like I'm lifting all the time like I'm getting more explosive like yeah. getting stronger like I'm able to shoot better like it's like all these yeah. different things that is like helping and it's like I wish yeah. I could have the strength and conditioning part yeah, yeah it's the agility mm -hmm. yeah I'll say I thought I was lifting weights in high school <laughs> um <laughs> Until I got to college, man, it was a rude awakening. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely changed change the game for me, too. Um, you know, preventing injuries, too, just, you know, being able to, you know, strengthen your legs, strengthen your core and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I definitely wish I would have taken my body seriously and <laughs> not going you to McDonald's You still put so together pretty. You were still all right, though. I was – Couple yeah, I was straight. checking you out. You still you be able to straight. body him and finish at the rim. Yeah, yep, you know. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like a lot of, a lot of that was natural. Natural. Yep. Uh, I'm just naturally thick like that. So it's big um, brother too. Big brother yeah. helps with that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, it was I started off as a big man because I was like big, bigger than everybody as a kid. Um, but I was thankful for my brother because I developed guard skills. I had to. I couldn't post him up. He was six seven inches taller than me so um but yeah, yeah thankful for him because I, I learned how to use my body and um you know play around the rim against bigger guys so um so let's move into you know um like your recruiting process um when you're in high school what was that like was it eventful for you or um talk to us about that uh and again it is some, it was something that was I, I wish I would have had some more knowledge in that, you know, yeah. um, being a first generation college kid, you know, that was mm -hmm. a little bit different, um, getting some of that knowledge, but you know, it was, it was some schools. There was a lot. The tough part was picking. Do you stop playing? Do you stop playing baseball? Do you stop playing basketball to focus on one? Um, there was a couple, I would say the bigger schools were probably at baseball, but I wasn't giving up who that just wasn't happening at that time. So um, but pretty uneventful. I think I decided in like June of something and it really just came down to, I just really like Grand Rapids. Um, yeah. And Aquinas won over, I think, the Olivet, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, it wasn't, I would have liked for it to be more eventful uh, mm -hmm. type of a deal, just because, you know, those are opportunities and you never know, but I, I couldn't have been happier with Aquinas College. Um, 
yeah. pretty quiet for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, I think all that matters is you find the school that's the best fit for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the recruiting process is like glorified, you know, by social media and everybody wants to be wanted, right? Um, but at the end of the day, if you find the school that you love and the school that loves you just as much, if not more, um, I think you won. So I think you won at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. And one of our kids that just left, and actually is at Aquinas, and my message to him was, it's good to be wanted, man. Yeah, no doubt. Where, where they want you at. And mm-hmm. so, and you guys know, man, there's some hope, there's some players in small college basketball. It's, oh, it's yeah, not like you, yeah. it's not like you're running in anybody <laughs> yeah, that can play yeah. in that camp. There's some kids that can hoop. So, yeah. um, competition. Uh, Cornerstone, Cornerstone beat us by 18, bro. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. They, they won the national us. championship my senior year, the they first year us. of winning it. Dang. And in West Dang. Michigan, small college is no joke. No joke at all. It's competitive. All of them. Yeah. Are. Yeah, like I really think that's like one of the biggest uh, <coughs> misconceptions and a pitfall too for like kids getting recruited. Because I mean, I remember my mindset. Um, you know, I was like, all right, I gotta go D one. I gotta go D one. Like, you know, if, if it if it ain't D one, then I'm whack. Like, you know, <laughs> or like it's just it's not good enough. And then it's like that's not the truth. That's not the truth. Like, yeah, you gotta go where you want it and. You know, in our case, me and Tram, you know, is it better going to Grand Valley where we actually go be able to like play for a championship or go to some small D1 and go? Don't say no names. I ain't gonna say no names. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So that's one of the things that kids nowadays that they, with the recruiting process, it's not D1 or bus, man. It's, right. it's keep playing because uh, you never know. You know well, if NBA is your, your career, I mean, you, the Duncan Robinsons, you never know guys like that. It started um, off at D3. Yeah. yeah. And then, but the, the, the experience is what it's about, man, because mm-hmm. right. that stuff is, you know, I'm old and I can't hoop anymore. I, I mean, I don't play anymore, but that, that, that memory, that experience and being on those things, it's still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you remember uh Alan Durham, like with the Grace. Yeah. He's still, He's playing, still playing pro. Any? Still playing pro. He's still yeah. playing pro. It's crazy. So it's possible. It's possible. You know, you said after you got done hooping at um Aquinas, then you was coaching at Aquinas. So you coached at Aquinas, uh Kalamazoo Central, Grand Rapids Central, Wyoming. Yep. I don't think have I missed did I miss any? Uh Rogers. I was Rogers. the varsity basketball coach at Rogers. Okay. Um, at Aquinas, I don't know if you know this, I coached girls for a year too. I didn't know okay. that. I was the assistant girls varsity coach, one of the assistants, and the varsity coach at Grand Rapids Central one year. Wow, uh, dope. Yeah. So, so uh, all, all that coaching experience. I mean, what? So, what is it about you know, like coaching that you that you love? helping kids, trying to do your help kids, you know, and, and growing within the game. You know, I, I, I think the old, the young me would appreciate the, the old me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, mm-hmm. like you learn so much, you, you see some experiences, you're on the sidelines. I'm way less passionate. I'm still passionate, but way less, it's more, it, it's just more calm, uh, yeah. that type of thing. But so you're growing as a coach, you're learning, like I said, you know, when I was playing, you know, it was the Bobby Knight motion was three out, two in, screen in, down screen, back screen, and all that stuff. Now it's dribble drive motion where, you know, you got a lot of you know, penetrating kicks. So, you know, growing at that. But I mean, at the end of the day, man, it's just, I had great, great parents, great family support. Uh, but basketball was, it, it was the motivator. It was kind of like, a, it didn't save my life. I didn't you know, need that. But it was what put you in a position, help put me in a position to go to college, help these experiences. So it was, it's such a, it was such a gift to me that I just, I want to give back as much as I possibly can. What was it um, like coaching on uh, that KZU team? That's like, I mean, for me and Tram, I mean, that team is like legendary. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, <laughs> I was there before the state championships. Uh, we kind of started to build that program. It was, it, it provided a ton of experiences 
that made me a better coach afterwards. Like mm -hmm. I would have loved to be me now and coach that team. Um, probably just because some experiences, but um, ultra talented, great kids in contact with a lot of them still today. Um, a lot of them are still involved with basketball, but ultimately what, I, what I'm most proud of is, is the fact that there are some kids that I believe changed their lives and are they're great fathers now today. They're doing some things within the community um, that I think we, we tried to emphasize growing up. Um, so that, that's probably ultimately the best thing about them. Uh, but, you know, it, it was my first real varsity job. I mean, varsity girls. Mm -hmm. um, but then my first real job. And, boy, you had, you had to learn uh, to put yeah. everything together. You're putting academics. You're putting culture. You're claiming the climate. All that stuff. You're putting it together. So um, very good experience. And, and you know, I, I love them boys from the Kalamazoo team that I had. And see them all the time. I mean, my man, Corey Person, still, he's coaching a travel ball program. And That's this guy. So sometimes you sit back and watch them coach and you just smile. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I um so I grew up playing against all those dudes, mm -hmm. K Zoo Blues. Um, and then I finally teamed up with them on the Mustangs. Yep. So like Corey, James, um, who else? Big Dante, Dave. You had Big, Big Dave. Dave Big Dave. Yep, yep. He came to watch Bernie play actually the other day. He went he came up oh, for where? a football game. So I met his family oh, and everything. What's so. up? I haven't, yeah, seen Dave in, I haven't seen Dave in years. Um, Dante Hudson as well. Yep. Um, yep. Doug. Big Doug. Doug. Big Doug. Man. Bruh. Never seen anything like it. No, that's the Bruh. one I... <laughs> Never anything. Yo. And I'm not certain I ever will. Anybody yeah, will ever will. For real. So kids funny story. Will duck, man, kids will duck nowadays, and I'll be like, like that ain't nice? That... Mm, nah. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but... Yeah. <laughs> So, I'm not trying to be mean, but uh, man, <laughs> funny story about six, Doug. Got you. Go ahead. Yeah, funny story about Doug. So, <clears throat> um, so he played with us I think my sophomore year. He was a freshman. So the first time I met him, we were at the University of Michigan um, practicing, and for like the first hour or so, some of the guys from the team uh, were like scrimmaging against us. We're just running open gym, like Jared Smith and Ronald Coleman. Uh, Deion Sims, all those dudes. Um, so they're you know giving us pointers and stuff like that. Um, and Doug was running with them, so I got there late. I got there late, and I just jumped in. Um, and Jared, you remember Jared? Uh, mm -hmm. Josh, Jared Smith was there too. Yep. He's throwing oops to Doug, just like Doug is catching him, <laughs> reversing. I'm like, dang! I'm like, Michigan about to have a a high <laughs> yeah. flyer this year. I, I'm really thinking he's. <laughs> like an incoming freshman at Michigan or he's actually, actually there. Um, so after we were done, we like teamed up and like Doug walked over. I was like, Oh, he's about to, you know, holler at us. That's what's up. And my coach was, uh, uh coach Allison, um, yep. Damon. um, he was like, yeah, everybody, you know, meet, meet Doug. Uh, he's a freshman, bro. I about fell out, bro. <laughs> I about fell out. Mm -hmm. I just was a freshman in high school. Ridiculous. Yeah. Re yeah. Re absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Bro. I remember I went and watched Doug as an eighth grader because I got the job and he was in eighth grade and he was just kind of freaked the line to freak the line. You saw some athleticism, but then as it got going, everybody's like, man, Doug, Doug, you got to check out Doug, man. This boy got bounced. Yeah. So first varsity practice, first tryouts, I get done and the freshmen are after us mm -hmm. and I, I'm in my office. I hear boom, boom, like they're doing a full court layup drill. I walked out and I watched them like 30 <laughs> seconds. I'm like, uh, you, you're going to be at our trials tomorrow. <laughs> not, there's no, no, you will be with us tomorrow. <laughs> Ever since then, he's been big uh, Doug. Man. Love big Doug. Yeah. There's some stuff that he didn't practice. Like I guess I don't get very impressed anymore. Yeah. There's just yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. We did a layup line to start the drill. After the drill, big Doug finished us off before we get into the real practicing. Mm -hmm. He's 360 reverse 360 windmilling at 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm just like, man, yeah, 15 years old, like it's <laughs> not normal. It's not normal Crazy. at all. No, <laughs> not, normal. not at all. He still got bounce. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll follow him. He could be, be dunking for the rest of his life. Probably. Josh, were you there when he yeah, go forever. Were you there when he came up and dunked at Wyoming for us? 
No, I was here before I got there. You was here before you got there. Yeah. Man. That's cold. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, so yeah, you mentioned you coaching uh the girl side, the boy side. What would you say is like the biggest difference between the two as a coach? Um as a coach, I think the biggest difference is, is when you're typically if you ask the girl to this is where you got to set the screen. There's no deviation. How about that? Mm-hmm. Boys gotcha. will deviate a little bit too. Yeah. And that's good for the game because basketball is like poetry. I mean, it's, it's just such good movement uh, where girls typically don't de- deviate. If you say dribble with your outside hand to get to this spot to do dribble handoff, they're going to dribble outside. A boy might hit you with an on the crossover, <laughs> move to something different. Um, but for the most part, uh, that's the one, the one different in terms of like the actual coaching piece of it. Um, and then, but ultimately it's still basketball. The young ladies nowadays can play, man. Man. Um, mm-hmm. but, and then up above the rim. I mean, that's obviously yeah. different. I mean, you know, the, the girls level boxing out is huge. You mean, you have to do it. You got a dug, go get it, big fella. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. the, yeah. So right. that's the two difference, but uh, yeah. that's the girls game is really, really improved man. really mm-hmm. uh, over the yeah. years. So yeah. opportunity. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, B3, man. Um, you know, it's your travel program, but it's, it's an all-a-life program. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. So um, it kind of started, I actually joined with Coach Camstead at, uh, he's a coach at West now, the boys. He was the girls coach in Wyoming. Now he's the boys coach at West. Um, his program, FBC, um, he got the varsity job at West and it kind of was kind of stepping away a little bit from that. So I wanted to keep doing something for my son and all of his friends, what was going on. And, um, man, we just started talking. Next thing you know, we came up with B3 Athletics um, and then kept it athletics because actually we're going to have a baseball team in the spring, um, uh, wow. high school baseball team, because we want wow. all – my ultimate goal is to have all athletics in a travel ball organization, kind of like, you know, that type of deal. But um, – so just started doing that and then, you know, wanted to provide an opportunity where um, kids can go play. Um, one of the things we like to do, we are, we do our best to have coaches, not dads. Now, some of us are, you know, I'm obviously a dad, but um, young and up and coming coaches, but providing opportunities for young student athletes to play and then young coaches to kind of get their feet wet and, and um, want to develop a program where, you know, like I said, it's just, um, college is the goal in terms of playing. Not doesn't have to be D one. It could be you know anywhere uh, type of deal. But you know that's it's been it's been really fun. Uh, three years, um, done some good growth. I'm very pleased with where we're at and still going. Still got to get going. You mentioned this. It's opportunities for not just players but coaches. How can they um, pursue an opportunity to play or coach with with B three um, this travel season? Um, right now, a lot of, we, we do a lot of social media, um, especially um, with that stuff. Uh, gonna, we'll, we'll have some tryouts coming up soon. I got to get the date solidified for seventh and eighth grade teams uh, potentially playing. High schools will be um, starting, obviously, after the high school season, uh, but plan on having a 15U, a 16U, and a 17U team again. Uh, but with young coaches, it's just, you know, networking with the coaches that come through. I, I like those kids that, that can still lace them up uh, and get put the shoes on and then go battle one-on-one. I'd love to, you know, if you two ever got some time, um, <laughs> you interested in, in getting the coaching gear out. Um, but just, just, just people who've played the game and has those experiences and know that, hey, you know, I would love to have the Grand Valley experience communicated to the kids. You know, my Aquinas experience, um, uh, this past summer, Coach uh, Jakari Johnson, you guys remember Jakari, played at Ottawa, yep, went down yep. to IPFW. Uh, yeah, so he, I was like, I was trying to put the name to him. Like, yeah, yep, was yep. nice. He came was nice. up and helped us legit. <laughs> he just communicating with the kids and just different teaching. And, uh, you know, so he played under with Coach Fife. So now yeah. we have that knowledge coming through a program, uh, things like that. Um, some some of the former players that we've had at Wyoming um, come through. Coach Brema, you know, and Brema from mm-hmm. Godwin. Brema. Um, you know, he's got that 
Coach Paddock experience. So yeah. um, th- there's that Davenport at the experience. So um, that's kind of what, you know, that's our ultimate goal is to have guys like that to, to come in and coach or even assist um, just because the communicating to these kids is experience. It's not all D1 or bust. Um, you know, mm-hmm. Raymond goes from NAIA to D2 uh, just because the school switched. Um, you know, so the, those things, and obviously, you know, we want, if a kid has the vision and the goals to play D1, you know, we want to help get them there. But, um, but ultimately, and then those kids want to be, those younger coaches, I call them kids, want to grow programs um, and, and just trying to give them as experience on the sidelines and pass on any knowledge that they want to take from me and, and ultimately help kids. Man, that's the main thing. Man. That's the main thing. Y'all, y'all, y'all get out and sign up a B3, man. Man, appreciate it. Good, good coach, good program. Yeah. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Yeah. Nice. And you know, we like to promote our kids. So my wife, you see the videos. <laughs> she's yeah, I, she's I trying to do it. things like that. And you know, some of it helped us. You know, we're able to get to college coaches, but uh, ultimately something designed so it's kid first, uh, kid and family first, and and that's been it's been our main goal the whole time, you know, mm-hmm. so come check us out. Yeah. Yeah, up? yeah, man. Shout out to you uh, for that vision. And um, I've seen you guys out about a couple of times. Um, yeah. Your kids play hard. So um, I absolutely love what you're doing and uh, keep on doing what you're doing for sure. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we'll switch gears just a little bit, it's still in the coaching realm, but you know, as a coach, all the experiences that you had as a coach um, playing yourself, what would be the biggest piece of advice that you would give to, you know, the younger generation of, um, about how they can get to the next level and succeed at that next level? First and foremost, academics. I've seen so many children struggle to get to where they're capable of getting because of that academic piece of it. Um, and a lot of times they realize it junior, senior year, and sometimes it's too late. Um, but ultimately what that comes down to is that hard work. Um, you know, the work, the grind, that, that's the, the process has to be enjoyable. Um, if that, if you can go in the gym six in the morning, get your hour workout in, get your lift in and still put the work in the classroom and enjoy it. Um, that's where the biggest growth comes in. Um, so ultimately just being a, putting in that work because that work translates to everything. I mean, relationships, your job, your career, all that stuff. If, if you are designed to be a worker, you eventually will, you will get to where you want to get to. Um, and it's a process and you got to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be the one thing is put the work in. And it's not always just um, doing the skill development. It might be going to tutoring for an hour. It might be going to get stronger. Um, it might be working on your, uh, your explosiveness, uh, but that work has to be done. Um, you can't, can't cut it short. Uh, it, it will catch you. Yes, it will. Man. It will. Yes. That's great advice, man. Um, I think we get one more question and we'll go to quick, quick hitters for the sake of time. Um, so what, what do you think, uh, is like the one thing or a couple things that you see, um, every day as a coach working at a school, uh, while I'm in junior high, um, that's holding players back the most today. That's a good question. Um, probably a little bit of a generational thing is the, it's not, it's not like a get rich scheme fast. You can't, you can't do that. You've got to, that work has to go in. Um, and just because you're not where you're at on December 9th, 2021, that doesn't mean that's your, where you're going to be at March 15th. Um, yeah. So putting that work in um, and being able to focus, because there's so many people, there's so many years, you D1, you D1, you this, you're that. And then when a kid fails, you know, it's almost like that's, you, you don't feel confident in yourself. Um, but being able to make it a, a grind and work and let it, let it land where it be. That's probably the one thing that uh, I think would help kids a little more nowadays. Um, you know, so sometimes you could bust your tail. You can work all day long, every day of the week, put six hours in gym, 
and you might only end up at NA high school. There is nothing wrong with that. That is a great opportunity. Um, but but that process of doing those things would be, that's probably the one thing that's missing. And it's not like kids don't work. It's just that often they get a little bit more discouraged quicker than mm. you want to be. And then so many other things are pulling them in different directions. The next thing you know, I'm not hoping anymore. I'm just going to concentrate on football or I'm just going to concentrate on this. And, mm-hmm. you know, so that would be it. Yeah. What, so what do you think about players that, specialize in, in a sport just one sport versus players that play like you multiple sports um i think there becomes a time where you have to mm-hmm. um but i that's more of a senior year in the college type deal um if you're going to play say basketball at western michigan university and you're a three sport athlete well as soon as that last sport is done you've got to specialize in basketball Um, but ultimately, man, athletes, athletes make the plays, you know, there's times there's, I play baseball. Have you guys ever played? Um, when you're in that batter's box, that's like sitting at the free throw line, but (laughs) but no, you, it's just you and that ball in the rim. Um, so athletes, all mental and competing, um, whether you're competing in baseball, track, basketball, there's a lot to be said for that. Um, so I personally think that you should be. My son's a three-sport athlete, um, and, and I enjoy all those other experiences because there's times you can see him make a move on the basketball court, and I'm like, oh, that's something that you picked up with another sport. So I get it. I understand, but um, I promote the three sports because I was probably a better football player growing up, and hoop dreams – had that put on the sideline through high school and it's probably one of my biggest regrets. I wish I would have played football in high school. Likewise with baseball, man. Likewise. Yeah. I wanted to be my brother basically. So I just kind of followed on what he was doing. So. Yeah. And a bad role model though. <laughs> no, not at all. Not, not at, at all. all. Not a bad role model at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ended up giving me a scholarship. So. Ended up working out, so it worked out. What position did you play in baseball? So I was uh, first base, and then I moved to center field, um, and pitcher too. Gotcha. Were you a lefty batter? Yep. Nice. Nice. Yep. I, I thought I was Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite baseball player of all time. Mine too, man. Oh man, that should be everybody's favorite baseball player. <laughs> Mine too, bro. Jeter's up see. there, but yeah, yeah. oh, he's from Kalamazoo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Kazoo. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I almost I almost cried, man, when King Griffey Jr. retired, bro. I was like, it's over. I don't even man. think I've wa- really watched baseball since. <laughs> honestly, I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's hit some of these quick hitters before you get out of here. So, uh, you go into the park, like you said, you used to hoop at the park. You got to bring four other people with you. Anybody except NBA players, who you who you picking? Who you bringing with you? So college, so college players included. College, it could be my man from around the block that you used to hoop with. Like, <laughs> all right. Well, okay. I got a all time one of my all time favorite teammates. Dude, just he got after it. Um, I would pick a dude. He actually lives up in here, Hudsonville area. Had a teammate uh, named Jason Meyer. Ended up walking on, playing football at Central Michigan, fullback, um, but just got after it. When like, if but you needed a screen, you were gonna get a screen. <laughs> um, rebound, competed. He's one of my all-time favorite teammates, uh, just because he 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 went after it like that. Um, I, I won't go to college players because I I mean I never hope I'll just do the people I hope with. Um, Troy Wilbar. I don't know if you guys know Troy. Yeah, Troy's a principal coached, at GRPS school. He, he uh, coached at Central for a minute, didn't he? Yep, Grand Rapids Central. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of victories with my man Troy. Um, a, lot, a lot of victories. Um, man, like my, Speaking of Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, he'd compete. He'd compete. He, he jumped center for us in college at 5'11", 6 foot. And he wow. barely lost. And he barely <laughs> lost. Um, wow. He, he was a competitor. Um, I don't want to shortchange anybody, but uh, 
a guy named Mike Jackson. Uh, Big Mike played at Aquinas. He was he was my roommate. He was another one of those guys that gave his game for the team. Um, Justin Jennings. Oh yeah, I heard about him. I played some yeah, pickup ball too. after I got older with Judd. Man, you talk the closest thing to like he was Doug before. Like he had bounced. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> he mm -hmm. can do it. Um, I, I played some pickup ball with him, and then um, we're at the park. I'm gonna run with my man Jay Carver. Jay, Jason Carver uh, played at Aquinas. He's down from the Parchment area. Um, just because I know when it when that line, line is drawn, he's gonna be right there standing next to me. <laughs> okay. And, and he's another one of those competitors and and would do things for the benefit of the team. Is that fine? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, you got it. You got I it. forgot one, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, all that'd right. probably be my squad just because. At the end of the day, you know, the best player always doesn't win. NBA, nah, typically. Nah. But yeah. the ones that just compete and get after it, and Especially you're not going to not gonna be there. So <laughs> that's for sure. Rest. For sure. All right. Um, three people dead or alive that you would love to sit down and have dinner with. That is good. Uh, <laughs> three people alive would love to sit down and have dinner with. Um, dead, dead or alive. Better, oh, Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Kobe, man, the knowledge, passion, the everything. Um, I know I'm a Jordan fan, but after Kobe passed and, and following and listening to him more, it, dude, special. Yeah. Um, yeah. Special. Kobe Bryant. Um, non player, Dr. Martin Luther King. That would be one, just yeah, because yeah. I think he was a generational above time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, uh, probably probably MJ. Probably MJ. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up? That's a good dinner. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, last question before we get out of here, but before you answer it, you got to help us get this person on the show. Oh, I got you. So who would you want to see on our show next? Honestly, who, what are you looking for? Player or coach? I got it. Let's do coach, uh, man, because I feel like we can get players. We can definitely get players. Okay. Coach. Grand Rapids area? Preferably, but it could be anywhere. Um, Anybody with some good knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, let me think. Grant coach in the area, Corey Person. Hey, Corey, Corey has some. That first off, go blue. Um, he's got yeah. that Michigan. He's got yeah. that Michigan. Yeah, Corey was a a four point old student. Yeah, he was smart. Smart. Um, and is very very knowledgeable and passionate about the game. Um, so. That, uh, Corey person. That's who I was. Okay. You got to help yeah. us get them all. For yeah, sure. I, shout out. Shout out, I got Corey, you. man. Yeah, shout out, I got Corey. you. Yeah. All right, man. That's a wrap. It's another episode of What Are We Missing? I want to thank Coach Bernard for spending some time with us. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to our page, and share us out, man. Continue to add and support this movement. We thank you all for listening. Until next time, peace out. Appreciate it, folks. Peace.